yeah sticky brakes a car that's 40 odd years old what do you do can't get brand new parts Hello and welcome to another budget and legged video. Now we have a 1971 Mercedes W115, which I've done previous videos on, and we have a stick in caliper. Now, cannot get brand new calipers. So, what we've managed to get is a full rebuild kit. Car's been sitting for a while, as I've explained in my other videos, and this is the only, I managed to free out all the other ones, no problem, new fluid and stuff like that, but this one just will not free up. We've got a full repair kit for it. Let's see exactly what we can do. Right, so what I did is just took out the two pins, which allowed me to get out the two brake pads. But it was advertised as a full rebuild kit. This is the kit we got here. Anyone want to tell me what they see wrong there? Yes, it's fairly obvious. And yeah, this is the annoying part because now I can't really do anything. Um, it doesn't have new pins, doesn't have the new retaining clip. That's not the end of the world. But what kind of is the end of the world is you can see this thing's missing. This seal to be precise. And it's kind of important because when you look at that one there, that seal's completely eaten away, but this seal is completely missing. So, yeah, I have to strip this now. We're gonna have to go and try and get another kit or try and get the bits that are missing. And it took like two weeks to get here, maybe two and a half weeks for this just to get here. So this is the problem when you're dealing with older cars. You can't just order them for the next day. Frustrating for everybody. Great. Right, what I've done is I have wedged the brake pedal down with a piece of wood against the subframe of the seat, which means no brake fluid will leak out, so you don't have to crimp the pipe or anything like that. Funny thing is, the one with the seal missing, which is this side, the, it's free. It's the one where the seal is kind of rotten that it's stuck in. So, what I want to do is I want to just make sure that this is the right kit. So if we have to get something else, I mean, it looks right, but if I can get a piston out and just measure the piston against the new one, we'll just have a better idea what's going on. Right, got it all off. And it, like I said, isn't it unusual how the one with the seal there is the seized one and the one without isn't. Um, as you can see, very rusty. It's been battered. The other one also has been battered. Look absolutely where is it chunks taken out of it and everything the the main seal looks to be correct the uh pistons also look to be correct they're the same uh they just seem to be a little bit higher say one mil high and i don't know if that's just because that's all completely in bat i don't know but yeah we'll have to see um but what I do want to do, I want to see if I can get this piston out. The retaining clip is just not there anymore. Well, I don't think, look at that. This could be an issue. Because if it's too far gone, we can't save it. Because you can't really take too much out of the bore in there because it'll leak. Right, let me see what I can do. One way we're doing it, if you had a vice, is to take it in half, which you just take them four bolts off. Get a piece of wood, wedge the piece of wood where the holes are here. That'll essentially block up that. And get an airline and squirt the airline in there, and hopefully that will push it out. But obviously, I haven't got any of that with me. So, we're going to kind of do it full gorilla um, and just hit it with a hammer. Uh, right, I keep forgetting I have a vice in my van with a worktop and uh, split the caliper in half. Someone's been at this before and they've rounded the uh, splines on the bolts and they've just damaged that. I tried to get a screwdriver in there and just peel it out and look, it just completely went. So 
I've now vice grips on it using the hammer try to bash it out and see exactly if this is repairable what damage is done and how it looks right definitely not the worst I've ever seen um, what can happen also is them seals can swell up from rust and cause this to stop sliding in and out but I mean yeah certainly not the worst I've ever seen needs are obviously a really good clean um, yeah that's all right um, but yeah if we can get that other seal we should be all right this is what I mean look at the damage done to these because people not having the right tools and then everyone moans at me oh you got too many tools you don't need all them you can get away with doing this and you're just kidding yourselves because this is the damage you do and now it's going to be difficult to reuse these. It's going to be very difficult to find these. Um, yeah, it just causes an absolute nightmare. Just buy the right tools, then you don't have an issue. Right, I have fixed the customer's problem. Um, you can just see in there, look. Brake line is hanging up. But, look. There we go. Simple. Seize caliper. Take it off. It's not seized. Right, hopefully you can see that. Look at all that slime and build up blocking that port basically. And that's what, oh well, there you go, you can even see it in there as well on the other side. So half of that was being blocked so we were never going to get the full pressure even though it was seized. But this is the issue when you leave it for too long without using it, things just break. Right, as you can see, that's the one I've cleaned. That's the one I haven't. You can see the difference. Now it takes a long, long time to clean it you want to get all in there clean as you can see look at the state of that one compared to that one so that's all nice fresh also bear in mind there is little seals to go on here only on one side so it seals against the other one but I'm going to rebuild this one now and then I kind of show on camera the other one um, do this one off camera it's just it's just me using you know wire brushes emery paper emery cloth brake clean, carb clean, you know, it's kind of boring. So I don't know if you really want to see it, but it just it's just able elbow grease and a lot of time, and then you can get it as clean as that. I did start cleaning the outside of it, but then I thought I can do that a lot easier once I put it back together. There's more to hold to, and then I can kind of clean the outside. Not that that really makes any difference. It's the inside we need to get clean for this. All right, and there we go, it's all back. So it's just a case of cleaning that one. What I'm going to do is I will put the head camera on and I will kind of clean it and fast forward the video. But I think it's just going to be quite boring because I'm just literally wire brushing, sanding, cleaning. You know, it's going to be quite boring, but I'll do it. Tell me what you think. See them little seals are in. The boot is on. And uh, yeah, so we'll get cracking with this one. Right, what we need to be careful of at first is any rubber seals some seals depending on what they're made of can be damaged with brake cleaner they can swell up and they can completely get destroyed now we've got the old seal in here so we're not bothered about that i'm obviously going to take that off because we're going to have to clean in behind it to make sure there's no rust jacket in but don't put any fresh seals on until you've completely cleaned and you're finished with it all because like i said brake clean can do damage so what i'm going to do now is i'm just literally going to get the wire brush and i'm just going to just gonna start brushing simple I'll take these off first now I know I said I'm gonna take these off first but I have to get spanners and torques and I'm just not there at the minute because they're not with me so I'm just getting lazy so I'm just gonna start cleaning wire brush lucky enough I managed to get the right length that fits on there perfectly it's gonna cut this and it's also gonna go inside this here you can see what it does. Right, I've just looked at some of the camera footage and I keep moving my head and you can't really see what I'm doing. 
so there's no point in me keep filming. I'm just literally wire brushing all the outside. All these here where it stays flat, we're going to sandpaper them nice and smooth. Emery cloth. Now again, you have to be careful. This outer lip here, before the seal, uh, doesn't, you know, can get kind of rusty. And that's going to be the worst part. Inside there, the brake fluid kind of keeps everything rust free to a degree. So this is going to be your worst thing. You don't want to scratch this up too much. I'm not going inside here with wire brushes. It's going to be emery cloths and, you know, wet and dry sandpaper. But on the outside, you can kind of go anywhere you want, you know, because it's just the outside at the end of the day. Uh, important to get that nice and clean because you want the new seal to sit down flat. So I'm just going to keep doing that. And once I've finished, I'll uh, show you what it looks like. Wow, look at that. Now, yes, we have brought a lot of shit down into there. That's why we need to clean all this afterwards. I like cleaning all the top first. So once you've cleaned all the top, then you can clean inside there because you know more stuff isn't going inside, essentially. So, um... Now brake dust is deadly so you want to make sure you're wearing masks and stuff because you don't want to be breathing that crap in. Um, it's not really the end of the world to clean the outside. I know I started on the other one but it's, you know, it's, it's going to get dirty anyway. Uh, it's up to you. But this is obviously the most important thing. You need to get this clean. All these mating surfaces clean. And um, yeah, so as you can see, the good old wire brush, just look what you can do. And what we do need to do is we need to get this old seal out. There we go. Maybe it doesn't look too bad to be honest. It's still nice and flexible, it hasn't cracked. But obviously we're changing it. But you do want to get inside there now, hopefully the camera's showing you that. You want to get inside there, make sure there's no rust or anything because if there's any rust and it starts, you know, pushing out, it's going to push out in the seal and misshape it and make the caliper stick or even leak or both. So, yeah, I'll continue cleaning, take these off and we'll uh, get it done. Also, before anyone says anything, this drain isn't connected to any sewage system or any drainage system. It's its own little unit. That's why I'm doing it like this. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing it, you know, over a sink. Because I know I'm going to get people in. Anyway. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. All we're essentially doing really in here is just polishing it. Just getting kind of the rough edges off. It's not really bad anyway. If it was really bad and really pitted, there's nothing you can really do about it. And um, lucky enough... It isn't, because otherwise you would be in trouble. Also, these don't have to be as maybe as smooth as you think, in the sense of because there's a little the the the, 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 the little rubber seal seals it. But you don't want to gouge them out. You still want to get them nice and smooth, but they don't have to be machine finished like you might think. Now on this one, which we didn't have on the other one, we have the bleed nipple and we also have the inlet, which we didn't have on the other one. Now some calipers might have one on each side. Uh, some four pod calipers have four because they're kind of universal, um, where this one isn't. But you can see just how clean that is inside there now. I'm going to have to maybe do that again one more time. And what I did is I just let some card clean carb cleaner I had to bung up this hole because of it'll all come out put some carb clean in there and use carb clean as kind of water you could say and as I'm cleaning it with that the carb clean is getting inside here and it's also cleaning at the same time and then I rinse everything out with brake clean so I'm going to let that settle for a few minutes and do the same again
Right, now what we've got to do, a couple of things. Always good to test fit this with no rubbers, no nothing, to see if it goes in nice and easy, it goes all the way down, which it does, and it comes out easy. Because if this doesn't go in and out easy now, you're in serious trouble. It's kind of the seal that kind of stops it going in and out easy, well, as easy as this anyway. So if that doesn't go in as easy as that, make sure you've got the right cylinder, make sure everything is clean. Now, I took off the original bleed nipple, and these are the two bleed nipples I got with the kit. I really don't like this kit. It says it was a full kit. It just isn't. It didn't give me the new bolt. It didn't give me the new pins for the... Anyway, look, you've seen that at the beginning of the video. Um, <clears throat> and this is the one that fits. This one's the wrong thread. But I don't like it. As you can see, it's twice as small. And the issue with it is, here, when you screw it in, the knot is really close and really far down to there. So I'm just not going to use it. I've cleaned this one and this one is still good. So I'm going to reuse that one. Now... Be careful when you're putting these seals in, and the reason is because you want to, what actually happens is, as you put it in, the last little bit it wants to turn on you, so let me just get this in, I mostly won't do it now, it's on camera, you can kind of see what it's trying to do, it's trying to turn on me, so when you push the last bit in, How they sometimes do it. Now, see that? It's trying to turn, and you force that in, you're going to force in with a turn. So be very, very careful. Use your net. That went in quite easy, actually. Sometimes they don't. Now, here you go. Look, that's perfect there. Now, I was wondering why it went in that easy. So very, very carefully, push your finger down. Hopefully you saw that. Now, that's gone down. Now, this won't go in. It won't go in easy at all, which is, again, a good thing. So... Get a little bit of grease that comes with it. And what I like to do is just grease up the, the rubber and just this bit here. You don't want to put grease inside here. This bit doesn't get um, oil on. Well, it kind of does as the piston comes out, but it doesn't really get as, as much protected as the um, inside. So what I like to do is grease all that up. Very, very small amount. It might look kind of a lot, but believe me, it isn't. So, if you get a little bit, it's not the end of the world, but I'll try and bother up that. Now, this can be tricky or it can be kind of easy. I always find it's sometimes best just to slightly turn it and push it at the same time. And you will kind of get it in. Now, if you have to force it like I'm doing there now, there is maybe the seal isn't sealed properly or in properly should I say maybe it's not greased enough maybe you still got a bit of rust in behind there we go now that is nice and easy just want to see how easy that is That is really, really nice and easy. So I'm happy with that. I want to leave this out a little bit for the rubber and I'll show you a really good trick with the rubber. I haven't got it with me yet. It didn't come with the kit, if you remember. Only one came with the kit, so the customer is coming down with another kit. It should be here soon. And then I can finish this and bolt it back together. Right, you just can't make this up. We've just got another new set in. Now this was sold as a front and rear caliper rebuild kit we've got four um seals they've only given us three piston seals piston seals so even this kit isn't complete it didn't come with these little rubbers not that we need them but it didn't come with them didn't come with the pins didn't come with anything <sighs> just unbelievable now it did come with a slightly different uh, way that these come in i prefer that one it had like a double skin over it where this one's only got a single one. Uh, I'm not going to take that one off. Well, actually, I can, look. Because, see that there, look? Like a double skin. And it fits over the top. So you saw that? Where this one's only a single skin. But still, these clips will go over. It will still work. It's just not as nice as that one. 
I don't believe. So uh, I'm going to put that on and then we can get this thing finished. So isn't that unbelievable? Two kits and they've both come incomplete. They've both got parts missing. Two completely different kits, different make. And again, same thing. This one didn't even come with the new uh, bleed nipples. It didn't come with the new seals in here. And again, it was sold as a full rebuild kit. So, I'm just going to see if there's any of these that are longer than the other one. There isn't. So, we'll just put that on there. The first seal. And it will, if you look... It is long enough, plenty long enough to go completely over. So what I'm going to do is just push it down, put that over there like that. Make sure it goes all the way down. Just use that to make sure it does. Once we get the clip in there, the clip will do the rest. So bend the clip around. Hopefully, you can kind of see what I'm doing. Now this clip does not actually want to go down. Wow. Where is the clip out of the other set? Gone. Oh, it must be here, because we've got five clips. down so that is all the way down hopefully the camera is getting all this in because this is the problem with the head camera I can't see anything it's slipping up why are you doing that that's why I just prefer the other ones to compare to this one seal is slipping on the thing. Now, there we go. Let's, let me get that in there. Very carefully lift the piston up. Let's see. No, look at that. Ah, oh, that's not going to work. not going to work. Fuck it. <sighs> right, I have an idea, but I don't know if it's going to work. The reason why this seal works is because it's the top seal that lifts up. So this top seal lifts up and the bottom seal stays there, where this, as the piston lifts up, it's just one seal and there's no lip in and around here. So this doesn't slide into a, into a lip which is really annoying because if it did, then it would slide into its own little lip like a circlip and it wouldn't go anywhere. Um, but it's not doing that. So my idea is to put this back. Hopefully, put this back. For fuck's sake! fucking thing how am I going to do this the other one no problem straight away went on why is this slipping off
Fucking hell. Fuck off. <sighs> Nearly a month. Nearly a month from the start of this to, to, to this point now. Stay there. For fuck's sake, I don't think this is going to work though because it's still going to push. And what I was hoping is kind of mimic this. That's essentially two seals in one, but they're actually connected here where this isn't connected here. So I don't think this is going to work because I don't think I'm going to be able to get that in there. And as soon as I start lifting up this, I have to be careful I don't lift up the pin. I don't think I'm going to be able to get that to sit inside there. I don't think it's going to want to do that. It's certainly not going to want to sit down there. Oh no. Why? Why? Look at that. Look at that for fuck's sake. You'll see what I mean, look. There's no lip there for that pin to sit, for that clip. That one's perfect. Not a problem. Like these were never on the original one. What? I mean, will that help keep it on? I doubt it. Because it's not going to do anything. How would that help keep it on? It wouldn't because this is just going to slide up with the piston. So it's not going to make any difference. I mean it wasn't even with, with it anyway. No, it's not going to make any difference whatsoever. Oh my god! Why can't two fucking companies get it right? These people from Holland Big Red from the UK for fuck's sake unbelievable right I did it but I had to do something I am not proud of but I've asked the customer the customers agreed to it it is absolutely fine now not a problem um, but like I said not particularly proud of it all I gotta do now is put this end onto that end get the bolts the right way they can only go one way because there is a cutout here for the head where the bolts can't go so you can only get them one way and uh, then it's done but like i said not proud of it but we've been waiting a month now since i've started this two kits are wrong just seriously frustrating this will work it's just yeah right it's all back together looking good it's gonna work uh, just like I said, I'm just not particularly happy with it, but anyway, so I'm going to get it back on here, no point me showing you, it's just a few bolts, and we're going to bleed it and see, does it still stick, does it work, does it do what it's supposed to, we'll find out in a few minutes, well, a few minutes for you. Okay, we are all bled up, and the moment of truth is, you can see now, it spins nice, just release the pedal, yep. now, 
Press the brake. Yep. Solid. Release. Release. Yeah. Press again. There we go. Absolutely solid. Perfect. Release. Release. Ah, perfect. Right, and there we go. That is practically how to build any caliper, really. Now, some of them do have a screw, so you have to screw the piston on, but it's practically the same. Absolutely perfect. There is a bit of a drag on it because of the rear diff and because of the shoes inside. But, I mean, that's absolutely inside the disc, the shoes inside the disc, not the pads. But there we go. So, as always, hope it helps. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget, links up here, links down below. But most importantly, don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one. Sweet. Thank you.